Greetings. So, we have discussed the Jaynes Cummings model and I mentioned uh, that uh, Harosh and Weinland realized this in, in the laboratory for which they got the Nobel Prize in 2012. And I am sharing these pictures with you because it was a great honor to have a photograph with uh, Professor Harosh. This was during his visit to Tirupati three years ago. Uh, he was over here and uh, he was kind enough to spare some time and uh, visit us and spend time with uh, our students. So, this is again the same picture from the Harosh paper which is available on the internet as I mentioned. And you have the entangled states of the dressed atom and the and the photon when the cavity has got n photons and then there are the two excited states of the atom which are involved in this um, one with n photons in the other with n plus 1 photons and these are the two states which get entangled and then you may have the Rabi oscillations uh, in these states. So, the degeneracy of these two states is essentially lifted by the coupling between the quantum electromagnetic field and, uh, and the atom and this can happen even if the number of photons is 0, if the atom is originally prepared in the excited state. Okay, it has to be originally prepared in the excited state, so that it can give one photon to the cavity and then reabsorb it, then give it back, reabsorb it and oscillate this way. All right? So, the atom field interaction, uh, what it has done is effect a unitary transformation from the pure states which are the direct product states of the atom and the photon. These are the tensor product states of the atom and the photon. And from this, you get a unitary transformation to the dress states which we have uh, labeled with the plus sign or the minus sign over here. And uh, you can write these in terms of each other because when you are writing a state vector, you can write it in terms of any basis, it does not matter what the basis is. It can be 0, 1 if you like or the two orth orthogonal normalized matrices or um, uh, the states 1 and 0 and the unitary transformation is with the coefficient sin theta and cos theta. Uh, in one case, you have got a minus sign because of the orthogonality between the two states, right. So, these are the dressed eigenstates and the eigenvalues of the dressed atom, right. So, I would like to emphasize this point which I made in the previous class also that when this angle of the unitary transformation happens to be 45 degrees, then sin theta and cosine theta are both equal and they are both equal to 1 over root 2. Okay? So, their squares are 1 over 2 and half of each adds up to 1. So, it is exactly in the same proportions that the two come, that is important, that both come in exactly the same proportions. The coefficient of the state 0 is exactly the same as the coefficient of the state 1 and these are maximally entangled Bell states. So, I would like to remind you, I have pulled out this slide from our previous unit which is from module 6 in lecture 24. This is slide number 105 which I have pulled out to be shared at this point of our discussion. It is the same slide, but basically to remind you that the Bell states which are also called as the EPR states, these are maximally correlated uh, qubits, okay, the quantum bits and they, 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 there can be four Bell states if you remember, 
So, 1 is phi plus minus these are these 2 and the other is psi plus minus another 2. So, these are the 4 Bell states which can be there and if you take one of these the take the phi plus for example, which is uh, the superposition with a plus sign of 0, 0 and 1, 1 both with coefficients of 1 over root 2. What it means that if you measure phi plus, okay, measure the first bit of phi plus, then it would return 0 with a probability of half, right, which is the modulus square of the corresponding coefficient. And if you get a probability half, what is the probability that it will return 1? It will also be half, okay? And it is like the toss of a coin, because when you, which is a classical coin, you toss it and there is half probability, 50 percent chance that you will get heads or tail, which is completely random, right? But what is interesting in the Bell state is that if you measure one of these, then the other is completely determined. Okay? If the first bit is returned to be 0, then the other is also guaranteed to be 0 if it is in the state phi plus. If the first bit turns out to be 1, then the other bit will also turn out to be exactly 1 in the state phi plus, right? Same thing would happen in any of the other three Bell states. Measurement of 1 will completely determine the other one, right? So, this is the uh, fantastic uh, property of the EPR states and essentially we are discussing here entanglement which is resulting from uh, superposition of the bare states of the factor states into entangled or rest states brought about by an appropriate unitary transformation. Okay? And these unitary transformations can take the initial superposition um, of 0 and 1, okay, initial 0 and 1 and it can, uh, it, it, it will be like a rotation of the block sphere about an arbitrary axis and essentially you are developing a quantum gate because that is what quantum gates do, which is to rotate the block sphere about a certain axis, right. So, this is as you can see of obvious importance in quantum computing, in quantum entanglement and here is a figure which is also from the paper by Bina in 2012 and it shows you how the energies of the dressed atom changes with detuning. The detuning delta equal to 0 is the resonance, but detuning can be either positive or negative because the energy of the photon can be greater than the excitation energy of the atom or it can be less than the excitation energy of the atom, right? So, accordingly the detuning can be uh, positive or negative and this figure shows you the evolution of the eigenstates of the dressed atom at resonance when delta is equal to 0, you get the Rabi, the generalized Rabi frequency becomes equal to the Rabi frequency and that is what you see in this figure, right? So, it is interesting to talk about the vacuum Rabi oscillations, all right? So, you have got these bare levels, the ground state with one photon which it can absorb and go to the excited state or the initial state can be an excited state with 0 photon, but it can give it to the cavity and then have it back. So, the atom and the field, these are the two things which are interacting with each other and they must be prepared 
either in the state E0 or G1, either you must have the atom in the excited state with no photon in the cavity or you have the atom in the ground state with exactly one photon in the cavity. And either of these initial conditions is completely equivalent to launch the entangled um, uh, dressing and the Rabe oscillations between these two states which are the superposition of the bare states. So, these oscillations are sometimes called as vacuum oscillations, vacuum Rabi oscillations or they are also called as one photon Rabi oscillations and the terminology is one or the other and it should not worry you because it only depends on what your initial state was, was it the G1 or the E0. Okay? If it is E0, you can call it as vacuum Rabi oscillations. If it is G1, you can call it as a one photon Rabi oscillations. It is the same thing. And uh, we know what the eigenvalues are. So, um, the corresponding Rabi frequency in the semi classical description is given by this matrix element of the dipole operator with the electric field. And, um, it is proportional to the Rabi frequency. The problem with the semi-classical description was that you require the coupling with the Hamiltonian, the coupling between the atom and the electromagnetic field. So, if the electromagnetic field was absent, this will not take you anywhere. Whereas, if the electromagnetic field is absent, in the quantum description of the electromagnetic field, you still have the vacuum, okay, because the energy of the electromagnetic field is given by n plus half h cross omega. So, even when n is equal to 0, <laughs> there is half h cross omega quantum energy in the oscillator, all right. So, this comes essentially from the quantum description of the electromagnetic field, the semi classical model does not have this provision. So, so, the stimulation of emission of a photon would not be possible in the semi-classical model, but it uh, obviously happens and that is because of the quantum description. So, this is the beauty of cavity quantum electrodynamics. So, uh, this, these are the states, these are again the states of um, the dressed atom, right, separated by uh, 2 h cross xi for the vacuum Rabi oscillations, okay. The energy difference is twice h cross xi, that is because n is equal to 0 and the energy separation is uh, just the vacuum Rabi frequency in units of H cross. So, this is something that you get these oscillations and they correspond to the oscillatory transition probability um, uh, which was described in the semi classical model also. So, you had this cos, cos square and sin square term which represented the probability of occupancy of the state 0 and 1, but that required the presence of the electromagnetic field mind you. So, this is the vacuum Rabi frequency and you have got these cosine and sine terms which give you the probability of the two states 1 and 2 and uh, uh, the, your, your state 1 can be g n plus 1 and state 2 can be e n if you like, right. And at resonance delta is 0 and then you essentially get this oscillatory behavior as we have seen earlier in the semi classical model, right. Now, one thing I would like to point out is that the dress states which are the plus and the minus and here we are talking about the vacuum Rabi oscillations. So, this is the plus 0 and the minus 0. So, these are the two states. 
these can actually be interpreted as low stationary states of two harmonic oscillators. Okay. This is two harmonic oscillators which are coupled to each other. So, these are one we are already aware of, we have been talking about it all along, which is the oscillator which describes the quantum electromagnetic field. But the atomic system can also be described by uh, harmonic oscillator kind of state and this is, if, uh, th this is then to be represented also by boson creation and destruction operators. So, you have the fundamental commutation relations for the boson operators, okay? the destruction and the commutation relations. So, they commute, right? The op these operators commute. If both are uh, destruction operators or both are uh, uh, creation operators, uh, they commute. And um, if you have one destruction operator and the other creation operator, then the commutator is not 0, but it is equal to unity, right, for the same mode. So, for photons, we have used the creation and destruction operators given by F and F dagger. And now we are going to treat the atomic system also by harmonic oscillator excitations. So, we need creation and destruction operators for the atomic harmonic oscillator. So, these I will denote as A and A dagger. And you have got the same set of commutation rules because these are also bosons represented by excitations of the harmonic oscillator. So, you represent the James Cummings Hamiltonian as by, by uh, interacting boson fields, one which is an atomic system and the other is the electromagnetic system and you have this coupling between two weakly interacting boson fields and essentially diagonalization amounts to getting the normal modes of this coupled oscillator. You have two oscillators you couple them and find the normal modes. These normal modes will give you the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the entangled system. Okay? So, you can write the normal mode operators as C and D and then you can write the Hamiltonian in terms of the creation and destruction operators corresponding to the normal mode oscillators C, C dagger C and D dagger D and these are two independent oscillators at frequencies omega plus xi and omega minus xi and you have got the lowest state which is n c equal to 1 and n d equal to 0 and the other is n c equal to 0 and n d equal to 1. So, these are the two lowest states. Now, which is c and which is d does not matter because c and d are both you know normal modes. So, they are like coupling of the previous two. So, this is like the coupling of the bare states into the entangled states. So, you have got, uh, so it does not matter what is C and what is D because your one is C and the other is D that is all that matters. And you get essentially the same eigenvalues of the rest atom which is omega plus or minus xi in terms of H cross, right. So, it is no surprise that you have got the same things because the earlier we did the diagonalization technique, here we are get, finding the normal modes of two coupled oscillators, which is to emphasize that you can treat this problem as uh, two oscillators, not just one oscillator and a quantum atom, but two oscillators and then you find the normal modes of this system and you can get, go from um, the bare states to the dress states by taking corresponding superpositions. So, the mathematics is completely equivalent, the physics is the same, but the viewpoint is different because uh, earlier we were thinking in terms of diagonalization of the uh, James Cummings Hamiltonian, now we are thinking of the normal modes of two coupled oscillators. So, it provides a different type of insight into the problem. And as a result of this, then it would become clear to you 
that the distinction between the photon and the atom really disappears when you talk about the entangled states, right? When you talk about the entangled states, the distinction between the atom and the photon disappears. And then if you had one atom and 10 photons or 10 atoms and one photon, the situation would be exactly the same. And the corresponding Rabi frequency will then be scaled by the same factor under root of n plus 1, where n is now the number of atoms rather than the number of photons. This is what I was referring to earlier. So you can have um, n atoms and one photon or n photons and one atom and you have the same mathematics. So, um, what would happen if you had a number of atoms in the cavity, then different atoms may get excited to different modes, okay? And then there will be different number of photons in the cavity and the oscillations would actually collapse at some point. And if you were to use a semi-classical model, you would not have any way of accounting for a revival of these oscillations which actually takes place and which has been seen in a good number of experiments which have been carried out, okay? So the revival takes place because of this quantum description. The, the cavity QED enables you to account for the revival of the Rabi oscillations, otherwise they would just collapse, they would die down, but there is, uh, they, would, they would die down irreversibly if you were to describe it only using the semi-classical method model. But now you are using uh, cavity QED, the quantum nature of the electromagnetic field in the cavity and the, this, this allows you to explain the revival of the uh, oscillations that you get in the James Cummings model, okay? You have to remember that when the atom gets de-excited from the excited state, it goes to the ground state and then photon is emitted. So in some sense, you are talking about the photon as a particle as a corpuscle, right? And how is it going to interact if that photon is here and the atom is here? What you have to remember is that the photon as soon as it is emitted, it is everywhere in the cavity. It fills up the whole cavity space, okay? It is everywhere and in this sense, it is not like a corpuscle in the classical sense. So you can call it as a corpuscular photon as a corpuscle of electromagnetic energy, but you have to remember that it is different from the classical corpuscle because a classical corpuscle is localized at a particular point, okay, like a grain of sand. But the photon fills up the whole cavity and that is what allows the revival of the Rabi oscillations after it has collapsed. So in, in, in free space, the oscillations would decay, okay, because then it would escape to infinity in free space. But now that it is in a cavity, it is confined to that cavity, it fills up the whole space and you have got these Rabi uh, oscillations which are enabled in that. So the importance of the cavity in this experiment is very important. Uh, very significant, which is why it is uh, called as cavity QED. Uh, many experimental confirmations uh, have been achieved in the laboratory. Um, Harosh uh, experiments were in the microwave region. He worked with Rydberg atoms, so Rydberg atoms are those with high principal quantum number and many uh, but uh, in the optical domain, there are experiments by Kimball's group. 
and uh, this is what they did which is to do the uh, see the quantum Rabi oscillations in a cavity which is the direct test of field quantization in a cavity. So, the only uh, comment that I would like to add we are um, uh, coming to the conclusion of this discussion. Um, when you work with actual light sources, you do not really have an exact number of photons. Okay. So, there is an uncertainty between the number of photons and the phase. Okay. And there is no way you can escape from that. That is a fundamental uncertainty principle. And to some extent, it is similar in nature to the uncertainty between energy and time. The reason it is similar is because uh, the inequality is of course the same, but also because there is no operator for time in quantum mechanics. And similarly, there is no operator for phase in quantum mechanics. Okay, you do not have an operator for phase. You do have an operator for um, uh, the rate of change of phase with energy. Okay? That is what comes from the work of Wigner and Smith and Eisenbode. Um, so, there is an operator for time delay but not for time itself. Okay? So, time itself is not represented by any Hermitian operator. It is therefore, not an observable, but time delay is um, can be represented by a Hermitian operator. So, you can have uh, electromagnetic field represented by different kind of uh, states. You have the vacuum state, which is what we have been discussing. You have the Fox state, which also we have used, which is which are eigenstates um, of the number operator, right? You can also have a coherent field, which are described by eigenstates of the destruction operator of the photon destruction operator. So there are different kinds of quantum states of the electromagnetic field, and the Rabi oscillations. This figure is um, from Wiener's article, um, which shows the collapse and the revival of Rabi oscillations, which really essentially requires the quantum description of the electromagnetic field. And you can read uh, about this further from this paper. And um, I uh, conclude this discussion at this point um, by mentioning uh, that all this quantum electrodynamics is coming from the works of uh, Planck and uh, Satyendranath Bose, Albert Einstein. They were the early ones to uh, quantize the electromagnetic field, right? And then the work of Rabi, and then Jaynes and Cummings, and then uh, Harosh, and of course, the formal theory of quantum electrodynamics developed by Dyson, Feynman, Schwinger, and uh, Thoma. Tomanaga, right? And I like to mention that um, uh, Harosh group has actually produced uh, maximally entangled states of two atoms using the same apparatus. Okay, I mentioned uh, the Bell states, the EPR states. Okay, so um, the, the references at the bottom of this slide, this paper by Harosh group in Physical Review Letters in 1997, generation of uh, Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen pairs of atoms, they have used the same apparatus. Okay? And you have uh, two cats, each can be dead or alive, and both each is in a state of superposition, and then you bring about a superposition between these. And this is really what you want to do to build a quantum computer, because you need entangled states, uh, entangled qubits, not just two, but you need more. And uh, the latest achievement uh, is possibly 
the 54 qubit uh, quantum computer built by Google. Thank you very much. But I will also like to thank uh, the NPTEL, okay, uh, and the DTH programs which are administered by um, uh, IIT Madras and IIT Tirupati, uh, particularly Professor Mangal Sundar and Professor T. S. Natarajan and our um, technical staff uh, whose support is, uh, has been very strong, Arun and Mani Kandashivan, right, both of them have helped us. So, thanks to all of you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.